Hey there, it's Elena Bear. I have a cold, I've had a cold for weeks and it's just not going away. So I'm just making the video anyway, raspy voice and all, um, because I have very exciting news. Lanson and I are expecting our second baby. It's just, it's, it's so awesome. But a lot of things are different the second time around. Um, so I wanted to tell you all about um, how I've been feeling and a little backstory on, um, you know, whether we were trying and um, all that kind of stuff. So I'm currently nine weeks, nine weeks and one day today. Um, so I'm going to recap everything from the time I found out until like all the way through the eighth week. Um, Lance and I did start trying. It's kind of weird because I didn't have a period yet. Um, I wasn't ovulating. I didn't have any periods because I was breastfeeding around the clock. And I am still breastfeeding around the clock. Kaya is all about her milkies and I've tried to cut back on feedings. Um, yeah, no, it just doesn't work. <laughs> so basically, um, we wanted to start trying in November of 2018. It is currently the end of August. I'm not going to post this right away after filming it. Um, I'll wait a couple weeks probably, but it's currently the end of August. Um, and we found out like mid July, I'll, I'll give more specifics on that. But the point is, um, we were quote unquote trying for about eight months. Um, however, from like some of that time, the first few months that we were trying, I wasn't ovulating. I didn't have periods. Um, I was using the ovulation kits that you can just get on Amazon. Um, and I was testing every single day and I wasn't ovulating. I finally ovulated at the end of January. So it was like almost three whole months of nothing until I finally ovulated. And then I got a very, very, very light ant flow five days later. And that's basically essentially what happened every cycle. I would get my period just a few days after ovulating. So that means my luteal phase was super short, which means there's not enough time for a baby to implant in my uterus, even, you know, even if the sperm and egg were to meet. Um, and I talked to my doctor and everything, and it's all just because of the breastfeeding hormones, which like I said, I tried to get that girl <laughs> to cut back a little bit, and it just was a fight that was not worth having. My midwife assured me that it would eventually improve, it, you know, my hormones would eventually balance out. Um, I had to kind of just be patient. So <clears throat> I know if I were to just wean Kaya, it, this whole thing would have been a lot faster. Um, but that's just not something we were willing to do. <clears throat> so it was frustrating and it definitely took longer than we anticipated. And it was just, there was a lot of unknowns um, during this process of trying to cook up our second baby. <laughs> and I'm not complaining because of course, like there are things I could have done. I could have weaned her and you know, I, I um, don't, I don't struggle with um, infertility, so I'm not claiming to uh, understand what that struggle is like, and that's so hard, and I've seen so many people online um, in the TTC community um, just go through long, difficult battles with infertility, and that's just, it's heartbreaking. But yeah, it took eight months, which was a lot longer than we thought it would. <clears throat> anyway, so. Um, I have a video of us seeing the pregnancy tests. I guess I would post that before I post this. I don't know. I have no plans for that. But anyway, my luteal phases were super short, but I finally made it to 10 DPO at some point. Um, I guess this was mid-July. And <clears throat> I'd never made it to 10 DPO since I gave birth to Kaya. I never, ever made it that far. So I was like, oh my goodness, something is up. I have to take a test. 
sure enough, we got a faint positive. <clears throat> so, so, so exciting. So I'm, I feel like I'm all over the place. I really didn't like plan out what I was gonna say or how I was gonna say it. So some people might be wondering if I had symptoms before my BFP, my big fat positive. Um, and my symptoms were exactly, exactly, exactly the same as they were every single month before getting ant flow. So I know that's a bummer for people that are trying to conceive and are like symptom spotting and like, ooh, do I feel different this month? Maybe I'm pregnant. I had nothing different. This cat's tail is just obnoxious. So that was weird, because of course I expected like, oh, if I'm pregnant, I'm gonna feel a little bit different. No. Oh, I've heard of people saying this before too. Um, I had a dream the night before I took my test. I had a really vivid dream that I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. And then the next morning I woke up and took a pregnancy test and it was positive. And I've like heard other people say things like that too, which is really cool. So um, I'm just gonna go through uh, my symptoms week by week at this point in the video. Okay, so I found out at 10 DPO, so that's like three and a half weeks pregnant. Um, right away, I already had like very, very, very mild nausea. It wasn't anything like, oh my gosh, morning sickness that's like, you know, unbearable. Um, which is what I've been going through recently, but right away at like three and a half, four weeks, I already was like a little bit, a little bit nauseous and like smells were already starting to seem stronger and grosser. So at three and four weeks, I was starving, like ravenously hungry, not like, oh, I could go for a snack. I was just eating like meals constantly i'm talking like every hour i would get like a plate of food it was so intense i just was starving um and then i was really into like spicy foods and just savory foods i'm normally someone with a sweet tooth and all throughout kaya's pregnancy my pregnancy with kaya i just wanted sugar like that's i didn't care about like i would get super hungry but i wanted to eat like a big plate of cookies or something or like an entire cake and like already so far it's been mainly all about like pasta and like things with like rich savory flavors and things like that um i've had some desserts obviously but it's not nearly as exciting it's not a craving that i have like for sweets at all which is totally unlike me Oh, this is this is going to be TMI. There's going to be plenty of TMI in these pregnancy updates. So um, Those early weeks I had a lot of like watery CM Which freaked me out because then it would almost feel like I was bleeding and I would just always like run and check Make sure I wasn't bleeding because it just was like It's just it felt like that um, and it was for a week or so maybe a couple of weeks It was doing that which was really annoying uh, I started having a little bit of fatigue and dizziness pretty early on, but yeah, I wrote down fatigue and dizziness, but like now is like a billion times worse. So it really, it was like, it was worse than my normal everyday life, I would say, but it's, it wasn't bad at all. Um, and I noticed I got moody, which I don't think I really, I wasn't that moody when I was pregnant with Kaya, um, but I would like get angry really quickly. <laughs> And I would just like, I'd be like, okay. And then all of a sudden just some little, little thing would happen and I'd be so mad. <laughs> and then I noticed my nipples were sore when I was nursing Kaya. It wasn't like all the time. When I was pregnant with her, it was like all the time. Like just even wearing a bra felt so painful. Um, just my shirt touching my nipples was so painful. And now it's really painful when she latches, but not any other time really. Okay, so then at five weeks, um, I started to have like actual nausea, like, um, and the food aversion started. Weeks three and four, I just like ate everything. I was love. I was eating, you know, meat and vegetables, no problem. Um, but then at week five, food aversions, and then it was like, ooh, this is gross. This smells weird. I don't even want to look at that, you know. Um, then the frequent uh, peeing started. 
and all sweets all of a sudden were really gross for a while like I couldn't eat a cookie like um, my mother-in-law went to the Pepperidge Farm um, like factory outlet and got all these delicious cookies like all my favorite Pepperidge Farm cookies they did not taste right. I did not like them. Like I think my husband ended up eating most of them. Continued to have sore nipples. Super, super thirsty that week. Just really thirsty, like guzzling water. Um, and started to get out of breath easily. Then at six weeks, the nausea really ramped up. Um, and this time around, my morning sickness was way worse than with Kaya. With Kaya, I thought it was really bad, but I knew, I mean, I know that, you know, a lot of women have it way, way worse. I didn't really throw up with, when I was pregnant with Kaya, I would like sometimes go to the bathroom and like gag and stuff, um, which I've done this time around as well. But for some reason, I will just have like terrible intense nausea and not throw up, which is kind of frustrating. And anyway, so I just am just nauseous and nauseous and nauseous and nauseous and nauseous and it just like doesn't go away <laughs> so yeah it's, i actually wrote at six weeks nausea is way and that's in all caps underlined worse like i can barely function <laughs> yeah um bad food aversions but still have cravings and get hungry a lot i eat really often and it helps while i'm eating still sore nipples when i'm nursing and this, at this point, I started to feel really guilty that I couldn't cook or clean or take Kaya out and do fun things with her because it like had been, you know, a week or two that I was just really down for the count. So, and then I don't have lists for the next couple weeks, so I'm going to just try to remember. Okay, um, I would say week seven and eight were basically the same as week six. Um, intense nausea, just unrelenting all day long didn't it didn't really come in waves and then go away I think with Kaya I would have like parts of the day that I felt better and then parts of the day where I felt super super sick this time it's just like constant nausea the whole time and while I'm eating while I'm chewing it's like a tiny tiny bit better um, and then as soon as I stop eating it's horrible again I think week eight was like I kept describing it as like just unbearable which may sound wimpy to some people um, that have had way harder pregnancies but I was losing it like at that point it had been three weeks of horrible nausea to where I couldn't do anything like obviously had to take care of Kaya while Lanson was at work. Um, my mom would come over sometimes and help a little bit, but you know, I had to feed her and change her diapers and sort of play with her a little bit. <laughs> um, and I couldn't take her anywhere. So she, poor thing just has all this energy and there's just, there wasn't much I could do for her and just, ugh, just broke my heart. And I just hate that because I want I want the best for her and I want to be able to take her to the playground and the library and all these places and I just for like three weeks I couldn't do anything I couldn't leave the house um, like so dizzy I didn't feel safe driving like anytime I would try to drive I like almost felt like I was drunk like I couldn't um, focus on the road I just didn't feel safe I was so dizzy um, you know intense fatigue just terrible and so I feel like week eight was the peak of all of these things at the same time and so just emotionally that was super super hard for me and it's it's just it's such a mind game because it's like I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful for this baby I wanted this baby for a long time I'm so happy to be having a baby but I have been feeling horrible in my body. <laughs> um, but yesterday I was nine weeks, today I'm nine weeks in one day. And I don't know if it's a fluke or what, you know, I don't wanna jinx anything, but I have definitely felt better yesterday and today. I don't know if I wanna say significantly better, but I feel better. 
Um, and this is around the time I started feeling better with Kaya too. It's like, it just, it's been really, 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 really wonderful. And I needed that because I was not feeling like myself. I was feeling like I was losing it. Um, yeah. And I, and it's like, oh, and I have this cold, by the way, I've had this cold, like the whole time I've been pregnant. I did go to the doctor. They said it's a virus. And I think just with my low immune system right now, my body's having a hard time kicking it. But I, I can really see the light at the end of the tunnel now. I still have enough symptoms that I'm not worried. I don't feel like, oh, I don't feel pregnant anymore. I feel pregnant. <laughs> and what's amazing is within the last two days, my belly has popped out a little bit, which is like really early. I know, I know it's just bloating, but I suddenly have all this bloating. And so it kind of looks like a little bump and um, I still do have like enough pregnancy symptoms for sure um, that I'm not worried at all. Um, I really want to talk about how um, with my last pregnancy I was so terrified, terrified of miscarriage. I thought about it constantly and it just was like paralyzing fear. Um, I had, there was one thing that I really clung to with that pregnancy which was a vision that I had of um, me standing out on the water during a huge storm and I just saw Jesus holding my hand with one of his hands and then holding my baby in his other hand and I just kept going back to that image um, every time the, the anxiety would really overwhelm me because it's like you know the Lord is holding my baby that was just such a, a powerful vision for me um, but still like all the time these things because I would go on the internet and I would go on these mom groups and you know other women are spotting or they're actually having miscarriages or um, they're just terrified of miscarriage and they're talking about it so I just kept seeing this stuff all day every day and that just it really messed with me and I had never had a child yet so I was like can my body even do this as my body even know how to be pregnant and carry a baby or like what if there's something wrong with me and I just can't even do this so there's just so many doubts and fears. And this time around, like I'm, I'm very aware of the statistics, but for some reason, whether it's my relationship with the Lord is so much stronger now. Um, I've been reading the Bible every single day. I've really like prayed and received peace. So all these things combined perhaps have really helped me to not have that crushing fear. I just am like standing so firm, trusting in the Lord and and yielding to his will. I think um, when I was pregnant with Kaya, it was like, this is what I want, give me what I want. Um, and I think that that's how I was for most of my life. When I would pray, it was like, God, I want this. I don't want any variations. Like my prayers were like a really complicated Starbucks order. You know, it's like, I want this, 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 no this, I want it this way. You know like extra hot no foam with whip blah blah and like that's how my prayers were and it was like I don't want it any other way this is how I want it give it to me now <laughs> and I mean I'm exaggerating obviously but looking back I feel like that's kind of how my prayers were and now it's like Lord you know better than me you know what I can handle you know what's good for me so your will be done <laughs> and then obviously it's like well this is what I want um, and you know that and none of that changes, you know, what could happen. But I'm, I am praying protection over the baby. I'm praying for, you know, angels to surround me and the baby. I'm, I'm praying for health and wholeness for the baby. Just feel a lot of peace about it. And that's just a huge change from my pregnancy with Kaya. I have a list of Bible verses that are really encouraging. Oh, I have to go get her. I think I want to make a video just reading those Bible verses, because um, otherwise it'll be too long to add to this. But I think that might help somebody, hopefully. <laughs> so I might do a separate video on that. Okay, BRB. So Kaya would not go back to sleep, so I'm gonna have to just wrap this up. But I wanted to show you my nine week bloat. I know it's not baby yet, but. So yeah, this is my, <laughs> this is my belly. Okay, well anyway, so there's already something happening with my belly, and it's actually kind of firm already at the bottom, so. 
yeah things are happening it's exciting i'm so happy to feel better today and hopefully my next update video will be with no cold and no morning sickness at all and just feeling super great <laughs> okay so thanks for listening to this super long rambling video i hope you're doing super awesome and great and if not let me know and i will pray for you and until next time, bye.